So here are some of the materials that you're going to want in your studio. So some of these materials come with your kit and some of them are materials that uh, you're going to have to get yourself. So your kit comes with a piece of canvas, it comes with clay, and it comes with some tools. I want to show you what these tools are. You're going to have a couple of brushes eventually. Um, these may not come in right away, but you're going to have a small brush for clay, for slip, and you're going to have a larger brush for glazing. Um, yours won't look like this. It'll have a big head like this, but it'll be, it'll be a fatter handle. That will, you won't need right away. Um, you'll also get a cup. Uh, your cup will be empty, um, but mine has some dried clay in it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, take some of your clay out of the bag and you can do this right away when you get your materials you're going to want to take your clay out of the bag and put uh, break it into some small pieces um, maybe half the size of this uh, so maybe a half an inch by half an inch or so and you can make yourself maybe five of those set them in the cup set them aside what we want to do is we want to have the clay dry out later on we're going to put water in it it'll slake and that'll be our slip but i'll tell you about that later uh, in your kit you also get a chamois a piece of chamois leather like this yours looks nicer than mine a uh, metal rib that is smooth on the surface this is different than the metal rib you're going to get um, that you're going to get uh, that has a serrated edge. This one's in the bookstore, this one's in your kit. You'll also get a carving tool. Yours looks, yours is a different type than mine, but it has a little blade and it has a little curved part on the one end. You'll get a wooden knife, a wooden rib, we're going to use this for paddling, um, and I might give you a loop tool. I uh, haven't decided on that one yet. That's what comes in your kit as well as some plastic. Uh, big plastic sheet is not trash. Uh, that's in there on purpose. Uh, it's very valuable in the studio, so hang on to that. Materials that you can buy at the bookstore. So you've got the serrated rib. Um, this is a nice tool for scoring. We're going to scratch the surface of the clay. It's also a nice tool for shaping, which is why I recommend it. Um, you can get other kinds of scoring tools, so a fine toothed comb, um, this is a pin tool, both of these are from ZM tools, um, but they're kind of expensive at ZM. Uh, but you can make a similar thing by just uh, uh, taping a bunch of pins together. <laughs> uh, it's, it'll be more fragile than this one, but it'll work. Um, and this one's another tool um, that you sometimes get in kits. Um, similarly, it has little pins um, that you can use to score with. Another tool, so this one's for sale in the bookstore. If you get this, this is great. You don't need this other stuff. Um, these guys here uh, are my version of what you get in the kit, the, the hand building kit that you buy at school or the modeling kit. Uh, mine are from a bunch of different brands. So I've got some wooden shaping tools. I've got some plastic shaping tools and I've got some loop tools. You'll have uh, little loop carving tools. Um, mine aren't quite the same, uh, but, but the ones you get a function just fine. So those are things you buy. These are things you get. And these other ones are things that you need to either buy or find. And uh, I suggest buy or find because um, usually they're pretty, you can find them around for not very much money. Um, one is a knife. Um, this one's just a paring knife, like from a, a you know, food, food store, or um, you might even find them at the dollar store, Walmart has them, things like that. We want a thin blade. Um, the wooden knife does not do what we need it to do. This one has kind of a blade on it, the one that comes in your kit, um, but it's not, this This one's nicer. This is, you want something like this with a handle. Um, not too, sh you know, doesn't need to be super sharp. Um, a butter knife is not a good choice because it, it tends to not be a thin blade. You want a thin blade like that. Um, this is a Dolan Tools knife, that's fine too, or a Fedling knife if you want to buy that. That's what they're often called. They're, they just have a longer blade. A needle tool is also really helpful. I don't think one comes in your kit, although if it does, that's excellent. Um, but you can uh, make a needle tool. Um, essentially what we need is a toothpick or a pin. We, we, need, we need this part. This part makes it easier to hold, but this is the part that's doing the work. I've also got a wooden spoon here um, because these are helpful for paddling. If you have a wooden spoon, um, use it. We, we can use it when we get there. Um, if you don't have a wooden spoon, we can kind of fake it with this one. Um, use this as a paddle. 
Uh, a sponge is also good. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a specific throwing or hand uh, clay sponge. Um, it could be a big, you know, just for cleanup and stuff like that. Occasionally we might use it with the clay, but mostly I'm talking about cleanup. You can also get a, you know, have a washcloth and towel handy for cleanup. Um, so those are the things you definitely want. I also want to show you some things that you might want to have um, that I sometimes use um, and ways to fake them. So this is a cutoff wire. Uh, where am I? This is a cutoff wire. Um, it comes with a throwing kit uh, and some clay kits, um, but you can use a piece of string, a piece of floss even works fine. Um, this hand building kit that you're going to buy in the bookstore, if you don't buy it in the bookstore, if you buy it on Amazon or something, there are sometimes lots of other kits, uh, lots of variations. This one's not, the one at the bookstore is not too expensive, but if you want to go crazy, <laughs> there are all sorts of tools um, that are wood, plastic, uh, these kind of dental pick tools that I have here. In fact, if you look, I've got a whole batch of tools here of various sorts, and I've got a whole nother drawer here that has all sorts of different kinds of carving tools. You can even sometimes find things around the house that can be useful. I have a batch of uh, these rubber tip tools. Actually, I use a ton of them, so I have all sorts of them here. But um, these rubber tip tools can be purchased online as well, or possibly in uh, at a place like Michael's. Um, the rubber tips are a little bit flexible. You can buy them as clay shaping tools or as drawing uh, blending tools for drawing. And then the other one I want to point, the other tool I want to mention to you is this mud rib, this Cheryl mud rib. I use this for some of the same uses as the metal rib here. Um, this one is uh, not going to cut you. <laughs> um, this one you do need, do need to be a little bit careful because it can get sharp. Some people like these. Um, they're like $8 and they're at the bookstore. Mine's pretty flexible. If you want one, get the red one would be my recommendation um, or one of the other slightly more flexible ones. Um, but you absolutely don't need to get that. In fact, we're going to fake a version of that. All right. Other tools to have around the studio, um, not strictly for making, but for storing and moving and working. Um, the I've given you some plastic sheeting, really helpful. Plastic bags are okay too, this stuff is better. Um, but you might, if you've got plastic bags around, you can use them as well. A towel or washcloth to clean up after yourself. Clay that dries in the studio becomes uh, dust if we leave it on surfaces and this dust if we brush it if we wipe it it kicks up into the air in fact that happens a bit when I do this um, that's bad for us it's not a good idea for us to be breathing that in pets animals kids us so it's a good idea to wipe down after you work every day. In fact, in my studio, I like to keep the floors really clean so that I'm not kicking and tracking that stuff around the studio. Um, I use some paper to work on. Um, that way my work doesn't stick to the table or the board. You can work on your canvas as well. Uh, but if you've got multiple pieces, sometimes it's nice to have loose pieces of paper. Phone book paper is great if you have a phone book, um, but uh, you know, typing paper, recycled paper, junk mail is all fine. I also like a board, and that's so that if I'm working on something and it's complicated, I don't have to pick it up and squish it as I move it. I can pick up the whole board and move it somewhere so that it can get stored. You can also, if you don't have a board, um, you can keep it in a cardboard box. I also have some of this stuff, um, It's you put it on before you work and then your hands don't dry out quite as much. Um, your hands, you're going to be washing hands a bunch, but you're also going to have clay on your hands a lot. And so that stuff dries out your hands and it's kind of unpleasant. One other thing you might want to have, particularly if you don't have a lot of storage space, is some kind of bin. Um, so I've got a couple of big, you know, like Rubbermaid Sterilite bins with lids or a smaller one, I've got clay in this right now, but a smaller one like this. You can use that and put the lid on and it'll keep the moisture inside, or you can just use the plastic and store your work either on a shelf or in a cardboard box or something. If you've got little people in your life, they sometimes get into it, so I recommend storing your work up high or in a box so they can't do that.